so happy to have Sveindis Jain Junstotir here from Wolfsburg slash Island, uh, Iceland. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome. Hi. How is preseason? Yeah, it's quite nice um, for a small group because of the World Cup, of hmm. course. Um, but it's really nice um, to be back and that we can train all together and with all the new players as well. So we're uh, becoming one team again. <laughs> is this a part of the year? How, how is this this part of the year in particular for you? Um, yeah, I think it's really important, to be honest, um, because we have a lot to work on and maybe some new um, new uh, things we want to uh, improve and to uh, add to our game. So I think this time um, with the team, as well as the new players to come in to our system and to just... Um, yeah, I get used to uh, playing for this big big club. Um, I think, um, yeah, everything is important for the preseason and just that we can um, get better and do even better than last year as mm. a team. You, you mentioned the World Cup. Have you looked, uh, have you seen a lot of matches or was it possible for you? Yeah, um, I've seen uh, all the matches that I can. Um, we're training sometimes at the same uh, time as the games. Um, and as well as the time difference. So some games are when I'm sleeping. So <laughs> I watch the games that I can and it's mm. really nice to watch. But uh, obviously it would be nice to be there with uh, my country, but I hope next time. <laughs> what was your impression after, I mean, we have two games left now only and uh, 28 of the teams are already gone. And what is your impression of, of the World Cup in general? Um, I think it's uh, a really nice one, to be honest. Um, I think... Um, it's probably the most competitive it has been uh, ever. Um, and you can see all all the teams that are there are giving the, um, all the small smaller nations, I mean, um, are giving the bigger ones tough games. Uh, and we've seen a lot of surprising um, results, I think. And yeah, but I think this is football and it should be like this. Um, uh, even if you're a big team, you cannot, um, I mean, you cannot think of the smaller ones as... A, a worse team, I feel like, um, mm. because women's football is getting bigger and bigger and every team now has great players and that's how it's supposed to be and I'm really happy to see that. What was the greatest surprise for you so far? Um, yeah, I think just uh, with the German team, I think, um, okay. uh, that they were out in the group stage, but I think it just shows how good all the teams have uh, improved. I mean, um, also... Obviously, it's disappointing for them, but I think they can learn uh, le learn from this. Um, it's a good experience. Uh, they have so many young players that experience the World Cup already, so that's also good for them. Um, and a little bit good for us also as a team. Now we have more time together, and mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I think they can see the good things in all of this. Uh, also to play in Australia, um, it's great for them, great um, experience, and uh, yeah, they can take the good from the uh, tournament and we'll come uh, back for a new season with full energy. Yeah, you are 22 years old now and you started uh, quite late playing football when you were nine years old, I read that. Is that true? And and how did you come to, to play football in Iceland? I mean, many people in your country play hand, is it handball in English, I guess? Yeah. Handball as well and you have some other sports, but you you, you came to football. How? Yeah, um, yeah, I started when I was nine. That's correct, um, which is pretty late. Um, at least um, now, I think. I think uh, kids go when they are four, five, three, just really early. But um, I chose uh, chose football because um, actually my coach at that time, when I was nine years old, came to my school and we're looking for players. Um, so um, my hometown is pretty small and. Girls in football was not really big when I was uh, younger. So the coach came to my school and asked if uh, we wanted to come to training. And I decided that I wanted to because I wasn't really uh, training anything. Um, I only went a few times to a basketball training and um, gymnastics. But I think football was for me. And I'm really happy that I uh, chose that. So, mm. yeah, that's how I 
became a footballer. <laughs> okay. You were born in, I think, Ke Keflavik, do you say? Ke mm -hmm. Ke and uh, which is known for the airport and for the Blue Lagoon, at least abroad. And uh, for, for all the people who have not never been to Iceland, I've been there twice and it's a beautiful country. <laughs> I've been there actually before you were born and um, I went to McDonald's in Reykjavik because I know that you don't have it now. Sure, <laughs> no, <yeah. laughs> it was there before you were born. But mm -hmm. uh, What is so great about Iceland? Why should people visit Iceland? Let's do a little advertisement for Iceland. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. As you say, it's really, it's a really beautiful country. Um, for me, I don't really go to um, see those things that tourists go to see, but it surprises me all the time when I look through social media. I think, like, if I go on Instagram or TikTok, I see videos, and I'm like, wow, what what a beautiful place this is, and I want to see what place it is, and it's in Iceland. And it always surprises me also um, with how many beautiful places there are. And as you mentioned, the Blue Lagoon, it's really close to my hometown. Um, I've been there a few times uh, really often. So to me, it's not that that mm. crazy, you know, I'm not, not like, oh, wow, the Blue Lagoon. I've been there yeah. so often, you know, but if if I was um, a foreigner that has never gone to Iceland, of course, I would think it's a really cool, uh, cool thing. I mean... Yeah, it's really nice. Uh, we have so many more um, like natural pools there and that with really nice uh, views uh, with the mountains and uh, wild, horse, uh, wild horses. The wild so horses, like yeah, it's mm. so cool. You can go there and go horseback riding or mm. whatever you want. I think it's, yeah, so cool and it's small. You can drive, you can go there for a vacation and drive the whole country if you want. Um, it doesn't take that long. Uh, mm. But yeah, I think... Iceland is a really nice place and I'm really happy to be uh, from there and that I can uh, represent my country playing football. So, yeah. <laughs> It's absolutely right what you say because I live in Stockholm and whenever I pass the old town, which is so huge for a tourist, I always say, okay, <laughs> the old town, the old town is there, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for others it's so it's so yeah. cool and yeah. it's really great experience to be there so yeah you, you started playing football when you were nine but then when you were 12 i read you had also already a reputation for your throw-ins which is one of your signature moves so to speak how does it come that you, with 12 you had already very strong throw-ins apparently um i think um so as i say my hometown pretty small we didn't have that many players um and uh With that, we didn't really win a lot of games. We had to experience uh, a lot of losses because we didn't have many players, and yeah, we didn't have anything to choose from. Uh, to yeah, so I feel like every time we got a throw in, I just thought, oh, I will just throw it at the goalkeeper and try to score, you know. And I did that, and I scored sometimes from uh, from throw ins because always someone has to like touch the ball, and I did it with so much power that they couldn't like not touch it you know so it just went in um but then people uh notice it and just uh yeah uh, i think people were just um telling me to use it more often and it's uh, a good ability i think and i actually trained it after i knew i could um throw wind so on so i always did it every day i went out and threw the ball as far as i could and i made some kind of a game out of it also so i really liked like challenging myself to try to throw it even further and then i saw progress and yeah now i can use it with my club and my mm. national team and most uh no sometimes we even score from it and that's so nice for me to see <laughs> yeah every everything in your career seems to happen quite fast that that's one of the impressions that i had you were 14 when you played in the second division and you were only 14 you had become 14 only a couple of days before you started playing there and then you go to the first league when you're 17 and you're playing all the national everything's and now you're in Wolfsburg at 22 mm -hmm. but you were 20 when you came there or 21 maybe yeah something like that yeah, yeah. So, mm -hmm. so everything happens so fast is that uh, you have an enormous physique I, th I said to Melanie before we uh, started mm -hmm. this and uh, that I saw you play in Sweden and you were very impressive but but when I see you now this morning I saw YouTube videos of Wolfsburg of the Champions League season and I saw a much stronger physically stronger Svein this much faster and much more powerful in your all your runs and all your movements so so everything happens so fast with you is that your physique or is that your your mindset your character or what what is this well first thank you for, <laughs> for that it's nice to hear um 
Yeah, I think everything went really fast, but um, I'm really thankful that I was in Iceland when I was in Iceland. I got this chance with the, um, you know, with my team really early to play against much older players and get the experience to, uh, yeah, be in the starting eleven against so much older and more experienced players. I think that helped me a lot, even though it was only the second division in Iceland, I feel like um, just the experience to play against much stronger players, much uh, bigger, older uh, experience, I think that helped me a lot. Um, I was really loyal to my team. Uh, there were some teams that wanted to have me before, but I stayed in my hometown and I am really happy about that. Uh, I got more experience. I never experienced being on the bench with my home team. So that's also really good uh, as a young player to develop and play. Um, but then I went to a bigger team um, in Iceland, but only on, on my loan. So I knew I wanted to go uh, abroad after that one uh, one loaning uh, season. Uh, I wanted to be sold from my home team, so they would maybe uh, get something a little bit for me. Uh, and yeah, then I went to Sweden, as you say, and I was there with Beta as a coach, and she taught me so much. Um, uh, that uh, I'm really thankful also for. Um, and that made me more uh, prepared to be in such a big club as Wolfsburg. Um, and here, obviously, we have the best staff and best trainers uh, that I could ask for. So uh, I think it's just um, makes sense that I get better here um, as a player. And we we are um, training so many things with the running and just the techniques and stuff. So I'm really happy that uh, you also can see that I'm getting probably stronger and faster, mm. and that's exactly what we want from me here. So I'm happy to hear that. Mm. Let, let's talk a little bit about Beta. You said Beta, Beta Gunnarsdott here in in uh, Kristianstad because you were in Kristianstad when you were like 16 already for a short period, very short. But you were there. How how did that come? And what what kind of role does she play? Because she's an incredible. I've met her. She's incredible. She has so many so much charisma. Mm -hmm. So, um, Beata, I think she had that um, every year that she t uh, took some players from Iceland, two, three players uh, for only one week uh, in trainings. And not really sure like why that is, but maybe it's also to show um, the players that this is possible now in women's football. Uh, players are being bought from everywhere. It wasn't like that before. Uh, and I think I'm really like thankful for that opportunity that I could go to uh, Kristianstad for one week because it was something else that I could see that um, I could play football and focus only on football there. Um, and also with uh, Adam Alsvenskan team, it's crazy that I did that at 16 years old and I'm so happy. And I was so I was so small and stressed a little bit for it, but I was there also with two of my um, friends with, mm. uh, that are in the national team now. And, and that experience was uh, something I'll never forget. Uh, it was so nice. Um, and only in that short period of time, uh, I saw what I really wanted. Mm. And that's when I was working hard to be in the A national team. I wanted to go to Krikonsa to um, Beta because I saw what she was doing there with the team. Everything that she's done for uh, that club is so nice, and really, it's a really big club now, only because of Beta, I would say. Um, yes. So yeah, she's done so much for the club, and uh, yeah, what a person she is, and I'm I'm still in contact with her because yeah, she's just that type of a uh, person. She wants uh, good for everyone, and she's always helping me still. So yeah, I'm really happy with that time, and that I could go there for one year after. Yeah, I understand yeah. that now because she probably showed you what you can achieve if you would go on uh, mm -hmm. working hard. She, you can come back, and you can go somewhere else, and and that was exactly. pretty good for a sixteen year old. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it's a really good experience. But then you came to Wolfsburg as, as still very young and from Sweden, and I expected that where she's going probably she's going to sit on the bench a lot. Mm. In, in the first year maybe in the first two years but but that didn't happen so and and why do you wear the shirt number 23 i don't i'm not forgetting yeah. this because you have it in the mm. national team and in uh, Wolfsburg. yeah so to me it doesn't really matter what number i have um so when i was nice and i had so many numbers nothing that was stuck to me or anything and 
at one time I got called up uh, for the first time in the national team. Um, they just gave me number 23. I okay. didn't even ask for anything. That was the number that was uh, no one had. So I just took that. And when I went to uh, Krikonstad, um, they had to ask me what number I wanted. And I just said, hmm, not really. I don't really care. Just anything that's... Uh, okay. That's not in use, and she gave me 23, so it would be the same in the national team and in Kikonstad. And when I came here, 23 wasn't um, available, so I had to take 32 yeah. because it was similar. Yeah. And then 23 got available, and I just took that. So, just, it would have so it's, a habit, it's a habit, not another story yeah. behind it. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> No, sorry. <laughs> but now you've played against uh, Arsenal, you played against Barcelona and Roma, and you did very well. And uh, uh, how is that to play Champions League as, at 22 years coming from, from Iceland and uh, reaching the final in the Champions League? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's unreal, to be honest. Um, I, I'm still... Um, yeah, uh, still really happy and... Uh, yeah, this is just something that every athlete wants to do. I think is playing in the highest, highest league, uh, highest game that you can reach. I think that's the Champions League final with your, um, with your club. Uh, and yeah, obviously we wanted to win, but we will just do that next time. Uh, this is still our goal to get the Champions League title, and I think a club like Wolfsburg should. Um, should be competing for it. So um, I think that's no secret what we want to do. Uh, but yeah, as I say, we have to uh, keep uh, training and uh, building us as a team. Um, but for me, it's a real, real honor to uh, have done this before. Uh, I think it's only three, uh, we're only three Icelanders that have uh, okay. played in the Champions League final. So I'm happy to be there. <laughs> yeah. How do you cope with losing uh, games? Or lo We see so many tears now at the World Cup, of course, of players who the team has lost and they have to go home. How do, you, how do you cope, for example, losing the Champions League final to Barcelona? It was a special loss because you led by two goals to nil in, at halftime and then they came back and, and won 3-2. Um, yeah, so to me, I always, right after a game, after a loss, it's... You always think it's the world is ending, everything is over, it's just it was so bad and everything is negative after that kind of a loss. But now after I don't know how many months now, uh, but after the game now, um it's a really good experience and to be playing in a full arena stadium full of people that want to watch you play football, it's just a great experience. Um losing a Champions League final, um First of all, I was there. Uh, we won so many games to come there. So um, that's also a really, uh, really big thing to be there. Um, but obviously, uh, that's not enough. We want to win. Uh, I want to win the Champions League one day. So now I've experienced to uh, lose the final. But now uh, I also want to experience winning it. So <laughs> we'll see. How is that in your private life when you lose some, when you play something and you lose? Is, is are you a good loser uh, outside of the pitch, or can't you yeah. lose there as well? Because I know that Magdalena Eriksson, for example, she's mm -hmm. a she says that she's a very bad loser, no matter what she plays or what she does. Yeah, um, I'm kind of there also. Uh, I really, really don't like uh, losing, and sometimes sometimes it's not nice because even when I'm playing cards. I get really, really mad and I quit if I lose. <laughs> I'm like, no, this is not possible. Or I just play until I win. So we can never quit the game until I win. <laughs> um, so that's not really, not a really great quality, but also it is good to, uh, for, you have to be competitive. Um, but sometimes it's, uh, it goes to the place that I don't want to play something. If I know I'm not good at it, then I hmm. don't participate <laughs> if it's but a card game that i know oh i'm not good at this hmm. then yeah i don't want to play <laughs> but that's probably uh, the mind the mindset that makes great football players as well probably you have to have that mindset yeah but you also have to have a mindset of learning from mistakes uh, so i try to do that also um in trainings it's not uh i think it's getting better um i sometimes get so frustrated that it only get, uh, makes you worse so you cannot get too frustrated because you have to um, build up on what you learn from, I think. So if you do the mistake, next time you don't do the same one. So hmm. it's 
a learning phase also. <laughs> is, speaking about learning, is there something that you would say that you learned from football or from the world of football for yourself as a person that is so that you thought that you didn't know of before you mm -hmm. started playing that football on elite level? Yeah, um, I think um, obviously uh, to me, um, football is everything you. Football, uh, I, that's the thing I do for a living. I go on training every day. Um, but after all, um, football isn't everything in life. I think there's also so much more um, that you can lear learn from and that just be thankful uh, that you can do the thing you love. Um, I mean, you could, you could get injured tomorrow and then what do you have, you know what I mean? Um, so you have to enjoy it. Um, and... So it's it could be so much worse, you know, um, with injuries and stuff. Uh, just be thankful that I can participate in the thing I love the most, um, and I have the honor to do this. Um, and some so many other people want to be where I am now, and I just want to enjoy uh, to be here. I think that's like really important. Um, And yeah, I'm so happy that and lucky to have this opportunity um, and so thankful. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can give so much to to other people as well. I see so many people in Sweden now after the games and, and, and even boys, because like 15 years ago, when I started watching women's football mm -hmm. a lot, uh, there were only girls running for Marta. She was here in Sweden and wanting yeah. to have selfies with her. But now actually I see so many young boys coming to, to, guys, yeah. to players like you and say, I want a selfie with Sveindis. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's so great um, mm. right now. Uh, it's, um, yeah, you see you see um, fans wearing a jersey. I don't know. You see fans wearing a Barcelona jersey. It's not only Lionel and Messi on the behind. You can mm. see Alexia Puteas uh, on the jersey. Um, you can see Bon Mati. You can see Alexander Pop on the Wolfsburg jersey that other, play uh, other fans are wearing. It's not only the men's now and... You can go to the store and buy a jersey with a woman's name on the back. I think that's that's so cool. Um, I, when I was even when I was starting playing football, I did not go to the store to buy a jersey with the name of uh, a woman's player on the back. So now it's so different that um, and yeah, you can look up to so many uh, players now. Uh, you can turn the TV on and there's a woman's match going mm. on. It wasn't like that before. Um, But did and... you have any female idols? Because Marta said that during the World Cup, when she was young, there were no women that were idols for her. She had to look up to some men players. But now, as she said, there's so many players that you can look yeah. up to as a girl or a boy. Mm, did you exactly. have any female idols? Um, yeah, I did. Um, I had uh, Icelandic idols uh, that I looked up to. Margaret Laura and Dani Brynastotir. Um, Those were the two um, of my favorites, um, and I could look at them live at the stadium in Iceland, so um, I'm happy about that. Uh, but as you say, yeah, it's not like today. Um, uh, it's not as much um, that before it wasn't as much um, that you could look at women's uh, football and be like, wow, this is my idol. It was more men's. I had also men's uh, footballers that I looked up to. Um, but yeah, today is different, and that's so great. <laughs> Mar Margaret was here in Sweden, wasn't she? She played yeah, in she Kishansa was, yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, her sister as well. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I have two more things only. Actually, you, your mother is from Ghana, yeah. and I wanted to ask because I'm always interested in this when you are grown up with two backgrounds, actually, which I think mm -hmm. is very rich. It enriches your life. What What you would say if if about this having two cultures that you can sort of connect to? How has that been for you? Yeah, um, actually, great. Um, <laughs> I, I like it a lot. Um, Before, I think um, when I was younger, uh, I didn't really talk that much about it. That I, uh, my mom was from Ghana, my dad is from Iceland. I only said I was Icelandic when I was in Iceland. But now I'm, I'm so um, happy with it uh, that I can say that my mom is from Ghana, my dad is from Iceland. Uh, I'm both. I'm Ghanaian and Icelandic. And 
And where in my house as a child, there was so much chaos everywhere. <laughs> we had my mom talking to me in Fanti or Tui, uh, my dad talking Icelandic to me. I talked with my mom in Icelandic, English. Everything was in, in my house. It was so funny. And so many uh, traditional dishes from Ghana. And then we had Icelandic food. So much variety. You could choose whatever you want. Um, but first of all, it was so great. My childhood was my childhood was great, and I'm really happy that uh, my mom came to Iceland, uh, and I was born there with all these opportunities. There are so much more opportunities uh, in Iceland than it would be in Ghana. So hmm. um, I'm really lucky with um, with my family, and uh, yeah, just blessed. To be honest. <laughs> I, I read a, no a novel this summer by a British author, Caleb Azuma Nelson. It's called Small Worlds, and he is his parents are from Ghana. And it's so fascinating to read this novel about his life as a young man in London, but also having always the the sort of influence also with the music. You talked about the, your languages, mm -hmm. and also yeah. I made actually jollof rice after I read this book because I wanted to taste it. I was yeah, so inspired so nice. by it. And I think that's that's really something that makes you a lot richer. Yeah, exactly. Um, you have these two backgrounds. Um, it's almost two different lives. Um, and yeah, it's just nice to uh, experience it. And it's not only um, only like, what, how can I say? It's so much uh, to experience from with all the parties my mom was ho uh, hosting or the parties we went to with my mom's family. It's so different. The culture hmm. is so different, but it's so cool to experience both. And yeah, it's hmm. nice. <laughs> yes, and and the last last thing is maybe is, is your hobby. I read that you were knitting. I don't know if you still do that. <laughs> yeah, I, I was actually thinking yesterday. Oh. Uh, well, it was funny. <laughs> yesterday I was like, I should start again because I stopped. Uh, I did it oh, so okay. often in uh, Germany. Uh, no, in Sweden, I was always on the bus rides to the away games. I was knitting something and. Um, I feel like it was yesterday and I was like, I should start again. It was so nice <laughs> and comfy just sitting there. You're not on the phone. You're just focusing on knitting. You can have music in the background or watch the TV or anything. It's really relaxing. And yeah, I will start again. So that's, yeah, it's good that we talked about it. Though. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now I have to. <laughs> I said it and now I have to. <laughs> and you also said there was one question in the, in the Wolfsburg video between you, you, you had to choose between Breaking Bad and... um. Game of Thrones, and you said Breaking Bad, and uh, how? What did you love about this show? Because I absolutely love it. I've seen it twice. Yeah, actually. and when was this actually? Is it a long time? Oh, ago? I don't know. Some year, maybe a year yeah, ago. Yeah, so. um, because I didn't watch either of them, and I was just uh, okay. I any. <laughs> but uh, it's like maybe two months ago I finished Breaking Bad, so this is really funny to me. Um, I watched it for the first time two months ago, I think, um, with my boyfriend. And first, I was like, "Oh, I really don't want to watch it. It's so, uh, it's so much." It's for very me. much so, violence and everything. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And I was like, "Oh, I don't want to watch this." I, I was always like looking away. But you get so much into it, and mm. this series is, I think, it's, it's so well done. It's crazy, actually, mm. and I really liked it uh, in the end. And yeah, I think it was so nice. So I would choose Breaking Bad from those. <laughs> you can you can watch Better Call Saul. That's the spin-off. It's, yeah, it's also I, perfect. Yeah, I you will love didn't it. even know of, uh, know of it, but my boyfriend is starting watching it now, so maybe I will also. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. That was everything I had to ask you, and I just wish you a very good season with your team and with your national team. You will play Germany and Wales and Denmark. Yeah. And how about the Nations League? Maybe that's the extra question. Yeah. What do you uh, think of the Nations League? Because it's new. Yeah, I think it's cool. There's more competitive games, and that's what I like. Um, uh, I think it's going to be so cool. And playing against all uh, Denmark, Wales, and Germany, of course, it's going to be really tough games. But uh, I think it's a really good addition to uh, the women's football and more competitive games, and I like it. And, and you will meet Lena Oberdorf on the other side. Yeah, and you, you two seem right. to be very good buddies, aren't you? Yeah, we are, um, and it's yeah. I really, <laughs> I'm not looking forward to playing against her. She's so mm. good, uh, or the German team. And no. I think there's always like seven, eight players from Wolfsburg in the starting there. So I will just be playing against my um, team <laughs> actually. But uh, yeah, I am both looking forward to it and not because uh, it's going to be a hard one, but it's gonna be fun as well. Mm. Mm -hmm. All the best to you, Sainis. Thank you very much Thanks for this, so and bye bye.
Thank you. Bye. Let's see you.